uh, Devdutt has asked me a question here. So why is it default HTTP client, but left hand side is only an HTTP client? So Devdutt, what happens in Android is, whenever we create an HTTP client, we actually get the default HTTP client. So it depends upon the device to device. So here we have taken the default HTTP client. So that is how the type conversion works. All right? just give me a moment here. Right. So here I have the HTTP client which takes the default HTTP client onto the device and then what I have done is I have shown you the activity main here which shows one text view here and you can see I have placed this text view under a scroll view because I do not know how much the data is going to be coming up from the web method here. So here I have placed this in a scroll view. If I go on to the sample here you can see my HTTP sample extends the activity class then I created the text view here and then I just referenced this text view with the help of the XML file and I created a method which a class which is get data so if I take you to the class here you can see my get data class extends the async task so let me tell you about this whenever we'll be doing a network operation right we'll be doing it with the help of some other classes like the async task. The reason why we do network operations on the, with the help of the async task is because whenever I do a network request, my UI thread is blocked for this particular time. I cannot have my network on the main thread. That is the UI thread in Android applications. And if I do not create an async task to do this particular task for me, what will happen is I'll be getting a network and on main thread exception. I hope everybody understands this. Why, why we are, why whenever we interact with a web web method or whenever we do an HTTP request, we always do it with the help of an async task. It's very much like a, Devda, an async task is very much like a new thread that you are spawning. So what happens is it creates a new thread and it does the background work onto the thread and as soon as it returns with the response it is shown to the user. I hope async task is clear to everyone now. What exactly is async task? All right. So if I just do a control space here you can see async task has a multiple of parameters. <coughs> All right. Which is string, void and again string. Async task, uh, Gangadhar has asked me a question here, is async task same as the synchronized in Java? Gangadhar async task is an asynchronized method, it's not synchronized. It's like once you do headed, it's not necessary that it, ha it uh, functions in a synchronized manner. So if you head it, it will just, any time it returns the response and displays it to the user. Alright, so it's not similar to the synchronized method in Java. I hope this is clear to you Gangadhar. Alright, so uh, Sujay has asked me a question here, please explain again. So Sujay what happens is whenever I do an HTTP request, alright, whenever I try to fetch some data from a URL, what happens is, what I'm doing is I'm doing a network operation. That is I'm trying to access the network, get some data from the network back and display it in my application. So the problem with it, while using Android applications is I cannot have it running onto the main thread. Right? I cannot have it running onto the main thread. So the reason why I have to spawn another thread is I'll be using an asynchronous task for it. So this async task will be an, another thread for me which will be doing the processing for me and as soon as it returns with the result I'll be displaying the result onto the user interface. So that is how and uh, async task works completely. Gangadhar, what happens is in uh, any of the web, web interactions, what we have is we always have the async calls. We do not have sync calls. All right. So whenever we'll be doing a web interaction, it is always in an async manner, not in a synchronized manner. Gangadhar. So here you would have seen that whenever I call 
an async task, I do get a few methods, few overridden methods that I'll be using in my class. One of those overridden methods is the do in background method. So what this do in background method does is, it actually does the complete operation in the background. So here what I'm doing is, I'm creating a buffered reader, I'm creating a string of the data type. All right? Then what I do is, I create a client, I create a new default HTTP client, create a URI, so the URI is the one that I'm passing on from this method. All right? So whenever I'll be calling the get data, if I call on execute, you see I, I'm passing a variable here, which is the URL, right? So URL is the first parameter that I get from the data here. I create a HTTP get, so I, I need to get some data from the HTTP client, so I'm creating the get, passing in the URI to the get here, and then finally get the response. The response is taken by when I try to execute the client, right? I get the response. I get the response as an input stream, so I take it here, that is I take it, take all the response into an input stream, then what I do is I create a reader, new buffered reader and new input stream reader. So what I'm doing here is, I'll, ju I'll just explain it to you again, now, I'll repeat the params for you again, Devdut. So what I'm doing here is I'm calling the reader with the help of the input stream. Then I finally create a string buffer. So everybody understands the difference between a string and a string buffer? Can anybody tell me the difference between a string and a string buffer? I need some responses from everyone. Uh, that's correct, Gangadhar. Uh, a little more explanation about it. What is immutable? What is mutable? Can I just get this explanation about it? So Gangadhar had given me an answer which is, he says string is immutable and string buffer is mutable. All right? So when I talk about a string is Im immutable, what I mean here is, that whenever I create a string object and I do some operations onto that string object, it always creates a new object for it, all right? However, in case of a string buffer, if I'm doing some manipulations onto the object of the string buffer, I just work on the same object. I'm not creating a new object for it, all right? So that is the difference between a mutable and an immutable object. I hope this is clear to everyone. All right, so here what I did was I created a buffer, created a new line separator, read the content, appended the new line separator, and finally returned the data. Data is the string object that I had created. All right, and here if you would have seen, there are two or more methods to it, and here I have on post execute. So what happens is whenever I am working on doing background, all right, so what happens is I'm actually doing the processing. So whenever I call the post execute, it means I'm done with the processing. What I need to do now is I need to update the UI. So here what I do is I just take the text view, set this particular text view with the result object that I got. And if uh, any uh, people were asking me about the async task, so here in the various parameters to the async task is the first parameter here signifies the URL that I'm passing up. Then the second parameter is void. So here this parameter signifies, there is one more method here which says on progress update. If I can just show you here. You can see this method on progress update. So what this method does is, suppose I'm doing some download, all right? I can also show the amount of download that is getting done, all right? So I can use this method in order to show the amount of get download that gets done from the URL, all right? So that is where I use this parameter. So I, if I'm using an integer variable here, so the void gets replaced by integer. And then the third parameter is the string param parameter again, which is the result object, all right? So this is the result object that will be shown to me. So let me just run it up for all of you. <laughs> 